Hello everyone, welcome back to another video of Attack ERP. In this video, I'm gonna show you how we can install Attack ERP front end and the back end SQL server. So let me show you ERP client setup first. I have to open setup application all other basic procedure you can click next you can choose location and complete the installation here the installation completed so along with client installation you have to open other file if you don't have other file you can contact our support and avail the same so you have to open other file and you can install for upgrade depend upon the bit of your system so it's 64 bit so I'm using 64 bit folder and here we have two type of file first one you have to install SQL and second one shared management object so let me first install this one you have to follow the same procedure or to complete the installation second one so addition to that you have to install sql server compact edition which will be available in the setup file itself you just open it and install first so my sister is already installed so i'm preparing it you can just continue with the fresh installation now go with the second one In some system, it may already install if they are using SQL uh, previously. So if it's not, you have to install this. This is mandatory if we need to configure it, the client and server, even if it's in same system. Now we can install SQL Expert 2040 as a backend. So this is an extracting file. You have to open it in order to extract. You can choose your file location where you need to extract. So here I'm using the default directory in order to extract. It will take a while. So once it is extracted, it will automatically open the procedure for the next step or else you can simply open the folder and you can open setup in order to access the same. So this is a setup wizard. Here you can use the first option, new SQL server installation standalone and you can wait for the loading. You can uh, accept the license terms and click next. Next. And it will check all the status once it is completed. You can see the features. You have to enable local DB. You can choose your directory if you need. I'm just using the default one. And click next. So here shows if the status passed. It will show passed. And right here we have an, uh, a rule that uh, .NET Framework 3.5 is required and uh, it's not yet installed. For that, it's very simple. You can use programs and features. Here you can use a uh, turn Windows features on and off and you can enable 3.5. And if you click OK, it will show uh, two options, download from Windows update we recommend download from windows update so you have to uh, make sure that your windows update is live if it is not you can start it from services anyway i'm using download required file and it's completing once it is finished we can rerun next one it's uh, instance name either you can give a name or instance or you can choose default instance so here i select default instance right now i don't have any instance now click next 
here you can uh, enable automatic instead of manual you can click next click next again once the installation completed you can click close button much close so this is how you can install sql expert 2014 as for next step we have to open configuration manager so that you can use this part based on your system bit you can choose your folder now it's 64 bit open it you can search sql here you can see sql manager let's open it so here you can see all the native connection and configurations so you can click one by one whichever is disabled you have to enable by right clicking the same you can enable it you can check one by one it's enabled you have to enable one by one and once everything is enabled you can use uh, SQL services and you can restart your service you can you, you need to identify your service name here and you can right click and restart your service in order to complete it will automatically stop and start the service and you can go for the next step so once you install all the front end and the back end we have to open server configuration which is mandatory in order to do the configuration some system may won't allow us to open server configuration in the first place so you have to give permission like run as administration for this application or you can give run as administration power to the whole software folder so you can just go to the properties and go to security now you have to click edit you can add everyone you can just type everyone or click check names you can see it here add you can see everyone here now by default it will be like this you have to enable everything allow full control click apply and it will apply for the everyone so it will allow you to open server config this is case to case some system may allow us to open some may not so you can just click that now let's try to open server configuration so if it is a demo version you can simply click register later or you can go with the one time license so in my case it's a demo so i'm clicking register later and you can see a window like this here you have to click database list and you can see database list like this if it is the first time it will see a blank list here you have to click the blue color button in order to load your server instantly now once it loaded you can see your instance name whichever instance you are using you have to select it and press enter okay so while you press enter if it shows user creation failed what you have to do is just copy this instance name and go to the setup file and here you can see other file patch file load open this and copy and paste it here it's okay in order to create so if it is successful it shows successfully created if it's not it show like login user failed don't worry follow the next for that you have to open the configuration manager and make sure it is enabled everything is enabled And once everything is enabled, if not, you have to enable it. If done, just restart again. This will clear the login user failed message. So once it's restarted, we can go for the next step. Now go back to server configuration again. Click on database list. Click on the button again. It will load your server instance name. select your instance name from the drop down list so again once you select click here hit enter this time it won't show any message which means you are successful to go create a company so just save it and click again the database list and new company 
So new company you can create anywhere other than C drive. If you don't have a C drive, don't worry, you have to use the public folder in the C drive. Then only you will get permission to create new. So in my case, let me show you. If it is public, you have to use C drive. And here, users public. Here you can create a new folder and you can create a company. Or if you have other drives, then you can simply create something here. For example, or let's say company. Any name you can create and simply click OK. So it will create. A new company on this location. Okay. Created successfully. Now you can see the company here. Click on the company name and click save. So it will let you select the company default. Now you can open attack ERP. So make sure you started server configuration. It will start here. Okay. Now this should be enabled so that uh, every time when you uh, restart, you know, uh, when you open the server configuration, the start will be like enabled by default. And also, if you want to make sure this server configuration is open every time when you open. Uh, on the computer after restarting after shutdown so when you open the company if you want this open you have to use how to place this exe in startup just type startup here now you can copy paste the server config exe so that um, you can simply enable the server, server configuration every time when you open. So when you shut down and open the company, oh sorry, uh, the system, it automatically open the server configuration. And with this, it help you to enable, you know, the start option automatically. All you have to do is just minimize it. Don't close it. You have to minimize if you want to run SQL. I mean, the connection to be established. So this should be enabled. So it will be here every time. If you want to modify anything, just click show and you can see. Whenever you need to click the database, of course, you have to stop the database. So you have to stop it. Go to database if you want to modify anything. Okay. Now that's how you can use server configuration. And once it's done, 90% uh, of our configuration is done. Now the next thing is to open attack ERP. So this is the main. We have to configure. Uh, uh, the financial period we have to set uh, the users all other accounting and inventory comes here in attack ERP. so you have to open this so let's open this so if it is the first time you are opening attack ERP in a fresh system then it will ask to enter the ip address so as this is the server and this is the uh, server system. So I want to access in this system. So I need to put the server IP. So of course the system in itself is the server IP or you can simply go to the server configuration topic database list. Here you can see this is the system name of course and this is the instance name. So you have to copy whatever you, you entered here, you selected here. This is what we need in the server IP. So if it is the server system, just copy the name itself. Okay. Okay, just start it. Now paste it here. The same, the system name. So server system name, click OK in order to open. Okay, if it is a client system that you install front end only in the client system, the back end is in the server. The same, you don't need to do the server configuration in the client system, of course. You just need to open attack ERP, but it will ask enter the IP address. There also, if it is a local system, local, local network, you know, you have to use the same server name in the client server IP address here. Okay, if it is a client system, you have to use the same name, whatever name you gave in the server on this IP address, that's what you need to do. Yeah. So the same system name you need to give in in the client system in order to open. So in my system, it's server. I am using the same name. So it should be the same as, you know, here in, in here, the server name. 
So this is what you need to do. All right. Now let's click OK. It will open attack ERP. First time, you know, the username and password is admin. You have to log in with admin admin. Okay. And you can log in. And it's a blank a database, no data, especially any any kind. Uh, apart from basic accounting and inventory and some settings, of course. So first you need to do before doing anything, you need to configure it correctly, you know, in, in the database in the company. First one is to maintain the financial period. So when you open, you know, you can see, you can search here and you can see the default financial period is 2022. You can skip that. You can simply create 2000, whichever date you need. Okay, you can simply select the from date and to date and click generate month here. And you can create new or you can simply search for it. You can edit this and you can extend. You can you can make sure this is the correct financial period. You can extend to any ending date. There is no uh, restriction. Okay, but as a uh, you know right procedure, you can maintain year wise financial period. Just click. Don't forget to click generate months. You can change the name and you can modify it. Okay. So like this, you can create new financial period after 2025, December 31st. You can create new one like 2026 um, from January to um, 26 December. So you can create one by one. Okay. So when you can use that, of course, when you try to log in, you can see the financial period even old and new you can see here. Okay. So you can choose that and you can log in. Now, the next step is to select the right country so that your currency will be updated before doing any transaction. So for example, I need to use, um, for example, this one. So you can see in my currency and the units. You can change all the information if you want, the company, um, the other things, you can click OK. Whenever you need, you can modify it again. So once it's done, you can go with, uh, there is a dashboard here. If you want to enable the dashboard, go to settings, user settings, and you can select the user. So if you create a new user, you can select that and you can enable. Even for the admin, you have to enable the graphs. So whichever you need, you can just enable it. This, this is all I need. Just click OK, close it. Now click on the dashboard button, it will run. So that's how you can do the basic configuration after installation. Thank you for watching.